Today's collectible spot, we are having a look at the Gathering's Lilania pre-painted statue. This is product code PF9719, and Spot picked this up from the folks over at E2046.com. You probably have seen several reviews already on this channel where we've looked at different statues that you can get from that website. I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested in getting some anime goodies. And I say goodies because they really have a cool selection of stuff over on E2046, one of which being the category marked The Gathering. And The Gathering essentially is... Uh, the category of statues where they have painted it for you. Saves you having to go in there if you don't have any skill set <clears throat> like myself. Uh, you can go to that category on the website and select from a selection of different statues that are already pre-painted. So you don't have to worry about painting in and getting all that stuff uh, going. So we're going to have a look at the Leilania pre-painted 1-6 statue. Uh, the box is basically the same as what we've seen with other uh, Gathering and uh, 2046 releases. Inside the box, you can see a slight image of what the Lilania pre-painted statue is going to look like. Uh, down below, www.e2046.com is the website you want to check out. Other than that, the box is pretty much standard. It's the same style of box as we've seen with other reviews. Spot's going to take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the 1-6th Lilania pre-painted statue. There's more heading your way, guys. Don't go anywhere. To come included with Lilania, that is the correct pronunciation of the statue, and I do apologize if that not be the case, uh, you do get yourself an assembly guide showing the PF9719 product code up the top corner, the website down below, e2046.com. Only three components, only the base, the very large broadsword, and the statue itself. Very, very easily uh, to assemble. It's not like the uh, the Bell Dandy that we just recently had a look at where there was mo multiple components that you had to put together and you had to be very careful. These at least you have only really three components. One of which being this really neat display stand featuring a snowy uh, backdrop or snowy floor front there. There's two peg holes where the statue will peg into place. You've got a couple of little rock little rock sculptures there. They've given it a slight icy blue finish to it as well, as opposed to just making it simply all white. There's the underside of the base. It's a slight departure from other um, statues that we've looked at on this channel, where they tend to just have a very, very neutral circular base. We've seen that with a couple of different examples. I suppose that not be the case with the uh, the pyramid head that we've already had a look at too. Pyramid head had a slightly different base as well, but a decent looking base, quite quite nice. Then you have this super super impressive sword, just simply jaw dropping the amount of paint that they put into that. I could not have accomplished this. Perhaps you could have. I certainly could not have. I I admit my my shortcomings, so to speak. But it's a very broad, broad-bladed sword with some exceptional uh, decorative details there. They painted it all in like a, almost like a copper color, some cranberry gold all the way down the blade itself. A darker, almost gunmetal handle to it. It's a beautiful looking sword. I wish this sword was almost a one-to-one -one scale. I would put that on my wall. Just exceptional detail. Love it. And then, the as your last piece goes, you have your main statue. And here we have Lilania. Leliana, or again, how, however you do pronounce that. Just beautiful looking piece. Now she does have peg holes on the undersides of her feet, or pegs, I should say, on the undersides of her feet. And uh, you just want to line it up to the statue, the statue's base and just apply a little bit of pressure. You want to make sure that you are lining these up properly. Again, you can reference if you need to. You can always reference your material here as to which way she actually goes. Yes, that does look in fact like that is the correct way. It's just a matter of applying a little bit of pressure to it. Lining up the feet and plugging it into place. Once you get that in place, go ahead and take the sword. And the sword, you want to just kind of slightly twist until you get the handle, the shorter end of the handle, wrapped around or in between her fingers and her thumb. 
It's not the easiest, granted, to get that in place, especially, and you might even want to find yourself, there we go, you might want to even find yourself moving the statue slightly just to kind of get it all in there. And that, right there, there we go, that is the finished piece. I guess you can just compensate, there we go, adjust the, the broad sword until you've got it just right. And you've got yourself, my friends, a finished, gorgeous looking statue. Let's look at some of the details. The choice of colors that they gave the statue is, I personally just love. It's It seems like a combination of uh, very pearl metallic blues, uh, very like silvers, golds, and stuff like that of that nature. The skin tone is actually a warmer skin tone, warmer than I was expecting. I almost expected it to be a paler uh, complexion. I'm just adjusting the sword if you're wondering what I'm doing. Spin it around there. You can see she's got the braided hair. I'm surprised also to find that they've looks like they've added a bit of metallicness to the braids, which on paper sounds like that could be jarring, but surprisingly it seems to work with the rest of the armor that they have on her. I'll just bring the camera back a little bit. All this phenomenal detail. Let's bring the camera down. There we go. All the phenomenal detail on the skirt the, I guess, plated skirt portion of her armor. It's not that she has an exceptional amount of armor. I mean, it really only takes up the majority of her torso and really only really from the sides of her torso, not, not making up the majority of her body. She's also got uh, her hand posed up. Not quite certain the, the gesture that she's indicating. But it's a very stoic stance. I do like that a lot. I really especially like the portion areas of her lower legs. But it reads almost slightly a, a purplish, almost gunmetal silver. That's a series of different colors there, Spot. But yeah, I do quite like that. It's broken up as well by the copper that makes up the area portion of her slight belt or lower torso area. And then she's got the flowingness of this blue cape that carries down from the figure's torso all the way down. One thing I do want to point out, though, is that the statue doesn't seem to sit all that properly into the display stand. I think the culprit is, while the first foot is firmly planted into the hole area, I feel like the back hole of the display stand isn't actually as recessed as it should be. Uh, the resulting is that the back foot doesn't sit as infirm of a place as the front of the foot, or the front foot, I should say. Other than that, though, it's a beautiful looking statue. Right there. Go ahead and move the instructions out of the way here. It almost actually shares a very similar pose to the uh, pyramid head that we've already had a look at on this channel. Now, Pyramid Head would have had the body in the one hand, and he would have been dragging the very large blade next to him. But it does share a very similar stance to here, what we have here with Leliana's uh, you know, pose and the way she's holding her sword. Uh, certainly fans of fantasy, and like the more fairy-esque ends of the fantasy uh, novels and novelizations out there, probably would want to jump on getting this one. It's, it's just, again, a simply beautiful piece. I would want to maybe correct the stance of her. Just again, maybe adjusting. Maybe I might just take a little bit of a, a knife or a small enough bit screwdriver and just kind of work away at that hole just so that the foot has a bit better footing in place. Other than that though, it's a simply jaw-dropping piece. I just love the amount of care, detail, and paint the gathering put into the piece. Certainly above and beyond something I'm more than capable. I can't, I can't, I could paint that if I saved my if it saved my life. But gathering, I think, did a phenomenal job. Spot so to put the link down below to uh, E2046 if you guys are interested in picking this up for yourself. Today's collectible spot, we were looking at another pre-painted statue from E2046, and more importantly, the gathering. We're looking at the 16 Liliana pre-painted statue. Stay tuned, guys. Spot's going to have more collectible spots heading your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.